Dear friends, I am Dr. K. Kandan, Professor of Mechanical Engineering, Anjaliya Malmahalangi Engineering College, Kovil Vanni. I am happy to meet you again in the solution and discussion on UPSC Engineering Service, Engineering Service Examination question in Mechanical Engineering. This is lecture number 29. The topic is boiler. So, we take few questions from the boiler in the UPSC Engineering Service Examination and we find the solution. First question from 2014 question paper. The air preheater of a boiler is located between, we have four options, force dot fan and the furnace, furnace and the economizer, economizer and the chimney, superheater and the furnace. The correct option is economizer and the chimney. So, the order of equipment in the boiler, evaporator, superheater, economizer, air preheater, induced draught fan and then chimney. So, this is economizer and chimney. Air preheater is located between economizer and chimney. The next question, a supercritical boiler requires only preheater and the superheater, preheater, evaporator and the superheater, only preheater, only superheater. Supercritical boiler. So, the pressure of the boiler is above the critical pressure. So, the supercritical boiler requires only the preheater, water preheater and the superheater. Normally, water preheater is known as economizer. So, we have economizer and the superheater in the critical, supercritical boiler where the operating pressure is above the 221 or 230 bar. The next question again from 2014 question paper. Supercritical boiler consists of only economizer and the superheater and it does not have evaporator because the four reasons are given. Water temperature can be raised to critical temperature in the economizer itself. High evaporation rate is achieved through the force convection of water through the tube. Enthalpy of evaporation becomes zero at critical pressure or above that. Flue gases used to run the rotary compressor supply high pressure air to the furnace. So, the correct option is enthalpy of evaporation becomes zero at critical pressure or above. So, the uh, as we said in the previous question, supercritical boiler, they are operating above the critical pressure, above the 230 bar. So, where the enthalpy of evaporation is zero, so the evaporator is not required. It is only heating the water and directly converting water into superheated steam in the superheater. Next question again from 2014 question paper. The correct sequence of location of equipment in the flue gas path from the furnace exit up to the chimney. The order of equipment are superheater, economizer, air preheater, electrostatic precipitator, induced draught fan. Then another option is superheater, economizer, electrostatic precipitator, induced draught fan, air preheater. Superheater, electrostatic precipitator, economizer, air preheater and induced draught fan. Superheater, electrostatic precipitator, induced dot fan and the economizer and the air preheater. The correct option is superheater, economizer, air preheater, electrostatic precipitator and the induced dot fan. This is the correct order of equipment from the outlet of the furnace, from the exit of the furnace to the chimney. The next question from 2014 question paper, the main advantage of water tube boiler over the fire tube boiler. So, we have four options. Among the four options, the correct answer is water tube boiler can operate safely at a higher pressure. The other operations, other op options given here, they are not uh, uh, correct. Next question, again from 2014 question paper, the collection efficiency of cyclone separator increases with decreasing particle size, increasing particle density, decreasing gas velocity, increasing number of gas revolutions and increasing cyclone diameter. Which of the above statements are correct? Option B, statement number 2 and 4, they are correct. 2 is increasing particle density and 4 is increasing number of gas revolution. So, that will, these two parameters will increase the collection efficiency of the cyclone separator. Next question from 2014 question paper, statement 1, the vertical boiler are used to save the floor space. Statement 2, horizontal boilers are more efficient than the vertical boiler. So, which of the, the correct, select the correct statement using the code given below. So, here the statement 1 and 2 are individually true, 
but the statement 2 is not the correct explanation for the statement 1. So both the statement are correct, they are true, but the 2 is not the correct explanation for the statement 1. Next question, again from 2014 question paper, the statement 1, the efficiency of a boiler is more if it is provided with mechanical draught rather than the natural draught. Natural draught is very costly but highly efficient. So, again select the correct option of the four options based on the code. So, among the two statements, statement 1 is true but the statement 2 is false. So, the efficiency of the boiler is more if it is provided with mechanical draught rather than natural draught. That statement is true. Natural draught is costly and highly efficient. That statement is not correct. Next question from 2015 question paper. Which of the following statements is correct for seam boiler? Boiler secondary heat transfer surface includes superheater, economist and the air preheater. Boiler primary heat transfer surface includes evaporator section, superheater section and reheat section. Boiler primary heat transfer surface includes evaporator section, economist and the superheater section. Boiler secondary heat transfer surface includes the evaporator section, economist and the air preheater. So, the correct option is boiler secondary heat transfer surface includes superheater, economizer and the air preheater and the boiler primary heat transfer surface is the evaporator and the reheater. Evaporator, reheater they are the boiler primary heat transfer surfaces, secondary heat transfer surfaces are superheater, economizer and the air preheater. Next question from 2015 question paper, for maximum discharge of hot gases through the chimney, the height the height of hot column producing the draught, there are four options, twice the height of the chimney, equal to the height of the chimney, half the height of the chimney and none of the above, the correct option is equal to height of the chimney. So, for maximum discharge, the height of the chimney should be equal to hot column producing the draught, equal to the height of the chimney. So, the height of the hot column producing the draught should be equal to the height of the chimney. Next question from 2016 question paper, the correct chronological order of in the development of steam generator, 5 tube boiler, mono tube boiler and water tube boiler. So, 5 tube boiler, so the flue gas are circulated inside the tubes, water tube boiler, water is circulated inside the tubes, mono tube boiler, this is also called as one through boiler, where the water, super critical boiler, they are the mono tube boiler or the one through boiler. So, the correct option is 5 tube boiler, water tube boiler and the mono tube boiler in terms of pressure of operation and in terms of uh, uh, the heat transfer, rate of heat transfer. The next question again from 2016 question paper, statement 1, heat carried away by the hot gases in the chimney draught is much greater than work required for lifting the same gases through the height of the chimney, yet artificial draught is not preferred. Second statement, artificial draught involves large initial cost as well as large maintenance cost. So, among the four options, which is correct? So, both the statement 1 and 2, they are correct, but the statement 2 is not the correct explanation of the statement 1. The next question, from 2019 question paper, a boiler is having chimney of 35 meter height, the draught produced in terms of water column is 20 millimeter. The temperature of the fluid gases inside the chimney is 365 degrees Celsius and that of air outside the chimney is 32 degrees Celsius. The mass of the air record will be nearly. We have four options. So, this is option D, 16.9 kilogram per kilogram of fuel is correct. We will see how in the next slide. So, height of the chimney is 35 meter, which is 0 0.035 meter of water column. Draught produced H equal to 0 0.02 meter of water. Gas temperature 365 degree which is 638 Kelvin, TA air temperature 32 degree Celsius which is 305 Kelvin. So, draught produced H equal to 353 capital H multiplied by 1 by TA minus MA plus 1 divided by MA into TG. Substitute numerical values left hand side is 0 0.02, 353 into H equal to 0 0.035 multiplied by 1 by 305 minus MA plus 1 divided by MA into 638. So, here MA plus 1 divided by MA into 638 equal to 1 by 305 minus 0 0.02 divided by 353 into 0 0.35 which is 3.278 10 power minus 3 minus 1.62 10 power minus 3 equal to 1.658 10 power minus 3. 
So M A plus one divided by M A equal to one point six eight six five eight ten power minus three into six thirty eight equal to one point zero five seven eight. So left hand side rearranging one plus one by M A equal to one point zero five seven eight. Now one by M A equal to zero point zero five seven eight, and the M A equal to seventeen point three kilogram per kilogram of fuel. So we we have taken the fourth option, which is sixteen point nine kilogram per kilogram of fuel. We stop here. So these are all the books I have written mechanically in the subject. Uh, you can and I upload the video lectures of all the subjects in the YouTube channel. You subscribe the channel. Use the videos for your better learning. Thank you for watching. Please post your comments on the comment box. So you can contact me for any clarification on the subject. We'll meet again in another video lecture on the solution of. Engineering Service Examination Question Paper. Until then, bye.